Oh, Luke, don't be that way, Midge said, flitting down to the ground. I hope you don't hold us accountable for how things worked out. No response. Yeah, buddy, Antagoral continued. We were always in your corner. Still friends, right? Come on, what do you say? What does he say? You're tossed with a Veronica Lake tug at the sweater. Quick, before he turns around! <laughs> Lou changed course so fast he almost tripped over his own black wingtips. Standing behind him, Semaphore wiped a trace of drool from the corner of, of his lips as Bliff simply rolled her eyes behind her horn rimmed spectacles. Perfect, he was shouting with pride. Just as I showed you. Georgiana flushed, flashed Lou a come hither look. He responded by going thither and was rewarded with a shot with a sly whisper in his ear. Five minutes later, a black expedition and a radial conversion van were driving in tandem toward the center of Plainville. Don't these mugs are with me, see? The notable America's greatest dick told the guard corporal as they drove past the court. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> I mean, thank you for choosing I know that that's right in the middle, and <laughs> at that point, there are so many characters in the book that you, as a reader, can follow everything that's going on. So thank you for indulging me, picking maybe not the most conducive passage. Oh, I enjoy for, it. For maybe beginners. Yeah. Oh, we, we got time. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, it should be said that, that uh, Lou is something of a peripheral character. Uh, I've got a number of characters that are in there pretty much just to steal a scene or two. <laughs> the, the, the main characters, uh, there are three of them, um, all three of whom are, uh, are actually uh, noted in this brief scene. Um, supermodel is uh, the, the name taken by a uh, superheroine who prefers to be known as Georgiana. Uh, nice that we're here in Walt Whitman's house to, to say this. It's uh, inspired actually by a character out of uh, out of Washington Irving, I believe. Um, so uh, we have this uh, early American thing going on here. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, she, she started out as Mindy McGuire, and she was uh, a women's studies major at Smith. And she, um, she gets roped into a disagreement among three goddesses about who's the most beautiful. Uh, this is basically the uh, Cassandra uh, myth. And just like Cassandra, uh, she ended up with a mixed blessing. She had to pick one, she picked one, and she got blessed by that one, cursed by the other two. So um, where Cassandra could see the future, but nobody would ever believe her, um, in Mindy's case, she was granted a superpower, but it was the most demeaning superpower she could imagine. <laughs> Which was that she became the apotheosis of feminine beauty on earth. And it's like, <laughs> That's she had to change her major. She, <laughs> That's <laughs> um, That's right, right. Great. So, what was the superpower? Uh, she became um, the world's most beautiful woman in, to, to the degree that um, she became um, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Aristotelian uh, transcendental. Um, uh, embodiment of beauty and whatever she decided was beautiful was beautiful um, and so uh, and, and but her concept of, of beauty or you know, being raised in America in the in the latter part of the 20th century uh, you, you know it's tight spandex you know workout big boobs blonde hair Farrah style so uh, that that was the vision of beauty that was imprinted on her when she was a little girl and so that, that became her concept of feminine beauty, and when she manifested the powers, that's what she began looking like. And uh, Ava Perone is helping her modulate that. Um, but, uh, but anyway... So her power is the power of great beauty, but, she's, but her concept of great beauty is not, uh, not what it might be, so she can, she can kind of like adjust it and become... And do people see her as beautiful? Yeah, everyone sees her as beautiful. And in the scene where she's introduced, um, there's, uh, they're, they're in a shopping mall, and uh, this 12-year-old boy goes, uh, uh, you hear the voice of this 12-year-old boy going, look, up there, it's, and, and then uh, you hear another voice going, supermodel, and it's the same kid. And oh. <laughs> and it's like, what just staring at? <laughs> so, um, so, 
so anyway, uh, she ends up, you know, working as an assistant manager at Macy's in this uh, shopping mall outside of St. Louis. And uh, she's walking around, it, you know, when she's in her Minnie McGuire you know, or her everyday uh, uh, mean, uh, she's, you know, wearing the, uh, the ready-to-wear pants suit and the name tag that says, hello, my name is Trainee. And, <laughs> and she, just, she just wants to maintain a little profile. She wants to be left alone. She does not want to ever use her powers, but she's kind of forced into the situation. And that's uh, where she meets uh, two other main characters, um, one of whom is uh, a, a, a mall cop. Now, here's the thing. In, in this world where so many people have gotten superpowers, how different is it going to be from this world? Not very, uh, because we all have skills and talents and abilities that we don't use here and now. So if you can fly, or you're super strong, or you can turn invisible, or you're super fast, or whatever, you're probably working for TSA, or you're a mall cop, or you're guarding a parking garage, or something like that, because uh, you've got other things, there are things that define you and limit you besides your, your powers and uh, whatever kind of kryptonite can affect your powers. But it, there there's, might be something wrong just with your hard wiring that is going to, uh, to cause you to not be all you can be with this power. So uh, one of the uh, all cops she, uh, she encounters is, uh, it, yeah, this is a uh, supermodel. And this right here with the exploding snot is Orville Ortley, Mucus Man, a uh, second generation superhero uh, who um, is a member of, of uh, who had been a member of the last remaining uh, superpowered team, uh, which he left, in, and it's kind of a spoiler about why he left and when he left, but uh, he, he left the Crusaders to become a mole cop. And uh, just because he felt he could uh, do the better job there. Now he's got all kinds of problems uh, that keep him from from fully.